is on not not Genesis. Okay, so all right, so we have a sample question here which would require us to use the chi square. And today it's very interesting that we are going to calculate the chi square manually. Alright, so that you see what happens behind your, your softwares such as your stata, and then later on when we try to do this, we will actually also be able to use the we will also actually also be able to use the stata itself to to use the chi square and make inferences from there. But what I want you to know is what is happening in the background as you are using the chi square. So we have a question here, and the question reads: Lamek observes that HIV exposed children had the tendency to have sepsis. Therefore, he designs an analytical cross-sectional study of HIV-exposed children and HIV and exposed children, where he compares the proportion of sepsis in the two groups. He enrolls 112 HIV exposed, so HIV exposed, he enrolls 112. Is showing one before? Yes. Do you have a different question? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, give me, let me use yours. Okay. okay, guys, this is 124. Let's use the 124 one, it's okay. So he enrolls 124 HIV exposed children and then of these HIV exposed 76 had sepsis so HIV exposed and then sepsis is in 76 of them He also enrolls 142 HIV and exposed. So of these 142 HIV and exposed, 93 had no sepsis. So no sepsis is equal to 93. So, this is the data that we have so far. And then we have five questions. Question one says, make and complete a contingency table demonstrating both the expected and the observed and the expected values. Then, question two is, what are the assumptions of the chi-square? Question three, what alternative test would you use if the Assumptions of the chi-square fail. Question four, show your work as you calculate the degrees of freedom. And question five, given that the critical value of the chi-square at alpha is equal to 0 0.05, is equal to 3.841. Using your degrees of freedom, determine whether there was an association between HIV exposure and sepsis. This is what your questions are going to sound like. And in essence, when you are given this information, one would start getting worried because they will be thinking, I've only been given not enough data, and how then am I going to come up with my contingency table, right? But this is not something that should worry. So let's go ahead and try and make your contingency table, our contingency table. So, in this contingency table of ours, we know our outcome variable. What's our outcome variable? Might as well put them side by side. So let me put it here, so that you see how this thing is going to flow. And let me have somebody who's very accurate 
with math to be helping me with the calculations as well. So, what is our outcome in this case? What's our outcome by? Sepsis. Okay, great. <laughs> so, sepsis is our outcome by. And we are saying there will be those that will have sepsis and those without sepsis. And then HIV exposure, which could actually mean being born from a mother that is living with HIV. So HIV exposure, yes or no in this case. So this is what you do when you're building the contingency table. So what data do we have? We have data such as we have 124 HIV exposed. So here you have the total, total, and then we have the overall, overall, total there. Here you get the totals. And they are the totals. So this is going to be the totals that you're going to get here is going to be the totals in the rows. Okay? So you have your rows in your contingency table and you have your columns in your contingency table. So if you total everything in here, these are going to give you totals for the rows. And these are going to give you totals for the columns. These become very important when you come to calculating the totals will become very important when you come to calculating the values in the expected. So, what was observed in this study? Well, they observed that they had 124 HIV exposed. And of these 124, 76 had sepsis. They also observed that from their study population, they were able to enroll 142 HIV and exposed children. And of these, 93 had no sepsis. So you need to watch and see that this is coming here in the no sepsis. So 93 had no sepsis. This is the data that we have so far are we able to populate our contingency table given this amount of data the answer is yes we are able to populate this and you will see how this is done so most a few times or a number of times when you're carrying out research you definitely have all this data available for you but just for the purpose of even being able to understand that when you know one, you can actually, in, given the degrees of freedom, when you know one observation, you might even know the other one. I had to just give you some of the information and then we can work around to calculate the values of the others. So how do we, how do we actually determine the values in here? You need to know that this is one straightforward thing to do. You know that from the study you had 124 HIV exposed. And of these, 76 are the ones that had sepsis. Therefore, you just say total exposed minus the ones with our outcome here, which is minus total sepsis is going to be the answer for total without sepsis. After all, when you add the number of children with sepsis to the number of children without sepsis, you get the total there, isn't it? 
So this is simple arithmetic. Therefore, we can say 124 minus 76 is going to be equal to the number of children that were that did not have steps. So 124 minus 76 is equal to 48. So we know that we have 48 who had no sepsis, right? So it becomes straightforward to calculate the value there as well. And the answer is simple, it's going to be 142 minus 93, 142 minus 93, which is equal to 49. So we know that if 93 had no sepsis, then 49 had the sepsis. Especially considering the fact that this variable is binary. We can also calculate the totals in the rows from there. How do we do this? We add total of, this, this is actually giving us the total number of children who had our outcome of interest. Take note that usually the outcome variable, we tend to put it in the rows and the exposure variables, usually we put it in the quotients. Okay, outcome is here usually, and then the exposure is usually there. So, how do we calculate the total number of children who had sepsis? We simply add that plus that, so it's going to be 76 plus 49. We have 125, and then we have 48 plus 93 to determine how many had no sepsis. In the study, we had 141 without sepsis. So these are the totals in the rows. These are the totals in the columns. Finally, you can calculate the overall total from that. How to calculate it? You can use either the totals in the rows and the totals in the columns. And just to be sure that you've done the correct thing, you can do it twice. 125 plus 1, 141 gives you 266 as the total. You can confirm this by saying 124 plus 1. 42, it gives you 266 as well, so you've known that you're doing the correct thing. The other way is just simply adding all that is in there, it will give you 266 as your total. So this is the overall total. What you are seeing here is the table of what was observed. This is an observed table. Now, the question said you should also be able to show us the expected table. What were you expecting? So how do you do this? So let's try to work out the expected. What was